Hey, you there. Thank you for watching, and welcome to Supreme Commander Forged Alliance Forever. Today, I have a 4v4 ladder map on the Naroxis map generator. So this map will be the only time you see it, because that's how the map generator works. So let's go on into it by introducing our players. Firstly, we start in the north. We have Lucius. At least I think that's how you pronounce that name. In red, going UEF and first land to his east we have maximus triple x as a cybern going first land as well in blue further south we have another cybern in crimson band a heel going first land and last but not least for team one we have lukmus going Aeon in green going first land. Let's check out their opponents for this game. Starting off with Enoculados as a UEF in teal. Still haven't decided exactly what color I'm going to call that. Turquoise, teal, whatever it's going to be. To his west we have BRS DCCC97. I think I'm going to call him BRS for this cast. He's going Aeon in white first land and second air to his northwest we have brick o insanity going uef in orange going first and s then second air he's also a caster as well so it's good to see him in this game and last but not least for the game we have a reference to a wonderful movie or series of movies T1000 going Seraphim in yellow going first land and I'm assuming land all day as he's gonna be prior prior primarily ah uh, excuse me over here to the west this is a 20 by 20 map so lots of room for our players to expand and get all of these beautiful beautiful mixes under their control check the reclaim out not a huge clump of reclaim that's just in one spot on the map it's kind of spread throughout the entire map so plenty of reclaim for our players to scoop up into their coffers and turn into weapons of destruction and structures and all of that the racial breakdown for team one in the top right hand corner we have two cybern one uef and an aeon so they are missing the seraphim faction and then for Team 2, down in the bottom, we have two UEF, a Seraphim, and an Aeon. So they are missing the Cybran faction. So no Telly Snipes for Team 2, and no Aswasher Bombers for Team 1, unless by some happenstance they're able to capture an enemy engineer. Let's see what's going on for our players in the middle. Nothing going on. We have a, a lonely Mantis hanging out doing some scouting. We have the, the calm of Team 1000 pushing, getting some more mexes, as well as uh, Lucius doing the same uh, as his mirror. In the south, we have uh, Inkalados not really pushing with his calm. Kind of in the middle, but just set on building the largest land factory production. And his mirror is being a little reserved. Not a whole lot of uh, expansion going on. So we'll see what will happen with that eastern flank. Air scouts for team two, getting a good readout on what the en their enemy is doing. Again... Air is very important. Air scouts, spy planes, you need that juicy, juicy intel. Because the more you know, the more you can prepare for. Not a whole lot of uh, mass disparity between the teams. We do have about a 20, 30 mass gener generated disparity for Team 1. But they're only up about 1,000 mass. So not a terrible differential. Very easy to come back from for Team 2. Comms being pushed out to kind of almost this center line for Team 2, getting that a nice uh, buff in damage compared to their s smaller T1, very weak units. But 
most of them are electing to build factories to produce more and more units, which is customary, of course. T2 upgrade on the way for T1000. That's the first upgrade notification we have. Interesting to see not him go for like gun or any of those other upgrades, but going straight for production. Not a whole lot of combat. We have some scouts over here for for E. I'm going to call him E because saying his name every time is going to take a minute. Uh, gun damage and range on the way for E as well. So we are seeing two upgrades for Team 2, but nothing for Team 1. Which, again, isn't the end of the road for them because... You know, anything can change in this game. The calm of Lucius moving to the west, taking it for these uh, mass points and energy in the corner. A good uh, stable position, able to funnel and force the units of T-1000 into this chokehold, this choke point right here. There are kind of other avenues of attack, but it's going to be mainly these two avenues. In the middle, we do have the forces out from Bricko and Sanity pushing on both sides of of mid, which is good to see, making sure to split the forces of Team 1 up, specifically uh, bad, because it allows for uh, pension maneuvers as well as not a lot of uh, congregation of power and units in one location. Gun now on the way for T-1000, so he is doing the gun as well. Good to see that. We have Bricko Insanity doing a T-2 upgrade as well. Bunch of upgrading the comms for Team 2. Still nothing on Team 1, but that will probably change soon if Team 1 elects to use their comms as uh, frontline units versus uh, construction units like engineers. Combat in the north... Mid-section, Samantha's going after these uh, these archers and strikers out from the UEF. And only went one way. Not not a whole lot of forces coming out from bad to really make an impact onto the small battalion of units over here. We have some T1 bombers out from Triple X. Seeing if he can do some damage onto these units. Not a whole lot of flat coverage. There is a couple units over here but not a whole lot to make a huge difference. It is good to have a uh, like a bunch of tanks, of course, but if you only have tanks, then you can't take out any air that might be uh, harassing you. So having a good complement of units is very important as well. Combat in the southeast. We do have the comm of Luke moving forward to deal with this run-by attempt from E. It probably would have been better to send his forces this way. So we could have avoided the calm, but the downside is obviously you're going into this small channel, and that could almost be as bad as running ahead force into a calm. So, not. I feel like Luke is going to bat that away pretty quickly. We do have some forces out from BRS taking this plateau, and all of the reclaim that's on it. Good to see that, getting a nice vantage point. Put some uh, point defense, put some artillery, put a couple shields. A nice uh, range of attack for him if he can hold it. Same with his compatriot over here taking the opposite little hillock little avenue of uh, raining fire from the from the uh, from the ground. We do have the first upgrade for team one. It is a T2 upgrade in the form of Lucius. We do have T1000 starting to mosey in on him but he's gonna finish that upgrade and be perfectly fine. Run by attempt does not go swimmingly. There are two units left, but I'm not going to do a whole lot. The forces out from Brick or oh, Insanity are looking like they're grouping up to move in. Attack the forces of Bad. And again, you can see that run by attempt. That's not going to go anywhere. He put his comm in the middle. And if you can see, let's see if I can click on him. That's the wrong person, excuse me. That's his range of attack. So pretty much there aren't... Eh, I mean, maybe a little bit down here, but pretty much he has that entire channel blocked off, which is a very good move, especially when he's rooted to the spot on an upgrade. Combat in the mid. 
going down for forces of Team 1 and Team 2. We do have a comm out from Maximus as well. So that is going to provide some much needed firepower if he decides to move it and engage. Which it doesn't look like he will because he's going for point defense instead. Combined push as well out for Team 2. So a lot of aggression for Team 1. We have movement on the north, we have movement in the mid, and we have movement on the south. So, and to use league terms, we have bot, mid, and, uh, sorry, top, mid, and bot lanes are pretty much being aggressively pushed by Team 2. But we do have a force of Team 1 moving to corner these forces out from E. Economic damage is going down a little bit for Team 2, looking like they're starting to take out these early mexes and radar installations. But this is not good, leaving your forces with no way to escape with a almost it looks like bigger force out from team one these forces are going to deal a lot of damage to each other but it's going to look like team one will go ahead and take that win calm for brick is up front as well so if they he decides to move back which he's going to he might be able to recover some forces but it won't be that many group of spy planes out for team one seeing what's up with the enemy over here uh, we do have T3 air completed for BRS. Do we have similar for Team 1? We do have a T3 ion, ion reactor, which means T3 has been achieved as well. But it looks like Brewery RC might be a little bit ahead, which he is because his power generator is completed first. Which is very important because you need a lot of power. Especially if you're spamming out ASF and strat moments, of course. Let's see, what else do we have here? Again, some posturing going on over here. T2PD going down, some uh, some of these triads, which out obviously outrange the T1PD. Take out the radar, they're not going to see anything. That's probably going to be his next move. Yep, there's the shots, and there it goes. Looks like Lucius was able to hold off the advances of Team 1, at least over here in this northwest section, but he is being pushed in the... S I guess the center top lane would be the way I'd describe it. I guess that'd be like part of jungle, would <laughs> be to use a leak terminology. Um, again, more spy planes. Again, or sorry, uh, air scouts. More intel. Counter push out from Team One in the form of Luke pushing back his uh, mirror as well as the forces from BRS. But E is on the front lines, starting to force that force back. We do have a gun speed upgrade for Luke as well and the forces of T-1000 went in for an attack and look like they're just being batted right back. Looks like T-1 might be looking at getting a firebase up and running over here. Nice cut off this uh, area of attack for Team 1. Would like to see him do something similar over here but the comm is doing it. So I mean they're doing it pretty much in mirror spots. Large force out for Bricko Insanity with some radar, some T2PD. So if he gets a shield up, and I guess he's going for a factory next, I would probably go for the shield just in case you have a, a sniper attempt. Because the ASFs are being produced as well as these Corsairs, these fighter bombers. You just got to watch out for that because he is so far forward. And it's going to take a while for him to walk back. But a bunch of shield generators, mobile shield generators coming in. So, I mean, if you can't have a stationary shield, mobile shield generators are also a good idea as well. Run by attempt from him as well. Noticing that the enemy is not paying attention as much. Might get a couple T2 mexes. I don't think he'll get to the main base, but he'll definitely do some economic damage. Calm rooted on an upgrade for Maximus. Can't go help out unless he wants to pause the upgrade. Just so that everybody knows, if you're not familiar, if you stop an upgrade in progress, you lose all of the mass and all of the progress. So you have to, if you want to do the upgrade, you just got to commit or suffer the loss in mass and energy. Continual pushback from E in this bot lane. Starting to force the his enemy back behind the center line. Scouting going on for Team 1. Is there any scouting on for Team 2? Not as of right now. 
like I say, every cast I've done, I think so far, Intel, 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 and more Intel, and just even more Intel if you can get it. Because the more you know, the more you can prepare for. Take a look at the Ecos. We almost have a hundred mass generation differential between Team 1 and Team 2. And a almost 40k mass gen uh, collected slash generated for Team 1 as well. So starting to see more units. Most likely they're probably going to go for a experimental at some point. Just due to the fact that they have a huge discrepancy. And we have some Titans that are very effective against T1 spam. So T3 land has been achieved for uh, Lucius. He's also going for Percival's as well. Some good alpha damage. Doesn't have a T3 power generator, which is interesting. They decided to go for that after the units, but... Uh, who knows, maybe he has a different build order than I'm usually accustomed to. Gun damage and range on the way for Brick. That's going to finish here right quick. We allow him to uh, shoot at farther range. ASF's being grouped up in the mid for Team 2. Not a lot of ASF's for Team 1, but there isn't a lot of air combat in the game to begin with, so having a little bit of ASF isn't the end of the world. Looks like we have a fire base cutting off the invasion for Team 1 over here in this choke point. Probably would have liked to see it more here, but if we're talking about just movement-wise, that is a better point of defense. Run by attempt for Team 2 in the form of E, run by all of his forces. We have the Calm out for Luke, getting a vet. Good to see that. More damage, more uh, hit points, more regen. Or I should say faster regen. T2 units for him, starting to bap away these uh, T1 units as well. Huge Team 1 spam in that direction. Probably should pause, let them group up, and then move in. Sending them in one at a time isn't really going to do a whole lot. T3 on the way for Lucius, so really going to hunker down in this position. No shield, no anti-air, very bad. Needs to get anti-air, needs to get a shield down, because at any point BRS could go gunships, he can go bombers, and just eradicate that position. Again, posturing here in mid, I think it's a little too late, 16 minutes in. Might want to start moving back because strat bombers, gunships, T3, land spam, like it won't matter. Eventually that position will get overrun, especially being that far forward. Oh, it looks like the comm of E is down. Looks like he died to the combined forces of the comm and Luke. Luke's uh, T2 forces. That is a bad break for Team 2. And they're even, I guess they're talking about it in chat, saying, oh, it turned out that was a bad idea. And that's him talking about it. So him realizing his mistake. Always good to learn from your mistakes, folks. Because as you learn and get better, the less mistakes you make. And the more effective you'll be in the game and in life as well. Do we have any experimentals under construction in the base? No, oh, taking out, uh, probably reclaiming some factories. I don't see any over here. T3 on the way still. Uh, Firebase getting uh, nice and beefed up. We got air grid starting to be a thing. I do not see any experimentals. And I guess it is 17 minutes, so it's not that soon that we start to see that kind of turn into just mass T uh, T4 spam, but run by opportunity by this loyalist and this titan is going to say nope not having it sorry bud and that shield is going to prevent really any lingering damage for the most part and there it goes we are seeing this kind of uh... bubble forming over here in terms of uh, the center line uh, it's not that smart to put your calm that far forward at this stage with this large area especially because it's 20 by 20 if it was like 10 v 10 or 10 by 10 or even 5 by 5 that's not a bad idea because it's not that far of a walk but to walk all the way back to your base for protection I'd like to see maybe a shield here or maybe even a shield here just to help with uh, retreating just in case you have to 
Uh, we have some restorers that just got eaten by that ASF ball. This is starting to look dangerous for Brick. He's far forward. He does have some anti-air in terms of units. Doesn't have any shields to speak of. Where is his calm? Did it start? Oh, they did start walking. I see there's some Corsairs. He's going to dodge. Okay, he dodged most of those shots. Where are the ASFs for Team 2 to help defend? It looks like they are gone, which is not good. And there go the Bombers again for their second pass. Brick's trying to dance. Brick's trying to dance. Get some anti-air. Probably thinking, where is my teammates at with the air? And yeah, that's that's going to be a kill. Oh, here they come. Here they come. Here they come in. But are they too late? 3,000 hit points. Sub 3,000. Sub 1,000. It's going to be close. It's going to be five 500. And boom. Brick Owen Sanity is taken out by Maximus. It is now gone from a 4v4 to a 4v2 in about 5 minutes. With the loss of E and the loss of Brick. We now have BRS having full control of the mid and bot lanes and T-1000 in control of the top lanes in terms of Team 2. All comms still active for Team 1. I don't see any too far forward comms. Uh, there's the comm for uh, Luke, comm for Bad. Uh, I guess the only one that's kind of in danger is Lucius. He's kind of far forward, building a Ravager. It's just a little dangerous because we just saw two comms go down that were too uh, too far forward, too outstretched. We do have some triads hanging out. Send some, I was going to say, send some units in, take that out. No need to have that online, especially that radar system as well. It is T1, but again, Intel is Intel, so... Uh, some Il not Il yeah, some Ilshis coming out from uh, Team 1000 looking to either go forward or at least prevent the movement of uh, Lucius. We do have uh, BRS being pushed back past the center line, but it looks like it's just kind of a, a seesaw of they go forward, they go back, they go forward, they go back. So. Not a huge uh, loss there. Huge land army. Huge with that ping going down. For team one out in the middle. They could probably easily just push since there's no fire bases. There's no... I mean, there's one over here. But they just avoided it by going this way. There's really nothing out for team one that can really stop this push. And the team one, I guess, noticed and are starting to push forward. They need some bombers. They need some gunships, anything to start halting that uh, progress on the mid lane. Do we have anything juicy going on for them? Is there a reason why they're not? Air grids going up galore. We have any um, experimentals going on the way? No. So there's nothing really that they're devoting a lot of their time and energy to, so they could have easily had another fire base here, just like they had over here. We do have a Monkey Lord on the way for Band, which is actually a good spot because he's in the water, so he's not likely to be seen. And it is pretty deep, at least in this section right here, you can kind of see. So if he is being uh, bombed by maybe strats or something, he can easily just walk further in. So it is a good spot, and they can go into water, so it's easier just comes out and says hi. That force out from Team 1 is starting to get past this center line, starting to make inroads. I would go this way. Yeah, even though there's, you know, production facilities, it's a longer route going this way. But, I mean, to each their own, I guess. Like I said, I'd rather go this way. There are restorers. There are some spy planes which aren't offensive capability. Anyway. Get your AFSFs in. Devote at least a few of them to these, uh, to these gunships. We do have the spy points can't cover the restores, so would have liked to see some anti-air in this mix. What's happening is they've split, and because they've split, and mainly all the T3 units are here, they're being taken out by the gunships, and the rest of T2's forces are able to come in and pincer maneuver them. Okay, here are those ASF coming in for the 
kills on these restorers, and there come the ASFs from Team 2. ASFs finish off the gunships, and they'll start attacking the ASFs, which they're probably going to get a win on that as well, just due to sheer numbers. There's some flak, but not a whole lot. But the benefit of splitting is that you're able to distract your opponent long enough to get damage done, which is what he's done, taking out these T3 facilities. There's only T team. There's a couple T3 units here and there, but not a whole lot to really push back quickly. We have these T3 units and Team 1 forces continuing pushing southward. We do have... Why are there two of them? Anyway, we'll look at that in a minute. Let's see how far these guys get. They have some uh, PD on the way. It's not going to do a whole lot. It's going to get bapped away. Uh, let's see how far... Uh, Bad pushes his forces through. Again, ASF's being um, killed in the skies. We do have an experimental unit on finished for BRS. It is the Galactic Colossus. I don't know why he like built one a little bit and then switched to that one. I don't know if that was a misclick or something. But anyway, that's going to be able to print and maneuver the rest of these forces. They need to move and quick because that face laser is coming. And those suction cup arms are also coming, so they need to move or they're going to get wasted. That other T1 force that we saw split off has now gone to the main base of T1000, who also has a chicken under construction, so that's good to see. These laser weapons, very effective against T1 spam. Able to uh, pretty much hit 98 99% of their shots. The only time they miss is if they have to change targets while firing. But they are devote, uh, they being Team 2 are devoting their resources to prevent the rest of this spam. Not a whole lot of combat. This would be a perfect opportunity for Team 1 in terms of Lucius to push forward in this position while they are distracted. Looks like Luke might be making an attempt to do that. Uh, all the forces in the south have been removed except for a couple of these uh, blazes. Looks like Luke did take advantage. That's uh, not going to finish destroying, especially with all these T1 bombers in tow. Uh, they're not going to get enough damage down. He looks like he's built, he being BRS, has built another Galactic Colossus. That's two Galactic Colossus on the way and constructed for Team 2, as well as a chicken. Still don't know how to pronounce that effect. We, Yathana? I think it's Yathana. Anyway. It's the it's the chicken. It, it, it's nicknaming the chicken because it kind of looks like a chicken. I don't know why. It just does. Anyway. Do we have anything spicy going on for Team 1? Still Monkey Lloyd still under construction. Probably need to up that speed a little bit. The grouping going on for Team 1. Putting a bunch of... Uh, T1 factories down for spam. Posturing going on for them on the other side of this little hillock that no one decided to land troops on. There's nothing... There's no mass points or anything to take, so it's not really that effective. But, in this case, since no one wants it, you might as well just take it, because then it gives you a nice firing arc on the stuff down there. So, mm. Who knows? Anyway... Still still very static over here. Got some missile launchers over here. Got some... Looks like a... Forward operating base on the way for Lucius. Kind of slow in the north. A lot of action going on in the middle and the south with bot lane. We have another experimental build for BRS. So that is most likely his third experimental built and constructed and online. And those two are pushing forward. And these guys are doing a run-by attempt, and it does not look good. You could easily overwhelm this position. There's a couple triads. Oh, I guess there's a bunch of Omni uh, Oblivion, so it's not that just weak, as I first intended. Army out for BRS as well, coming to cut off the T1 spam out from Maximus. Lucius Control Ks. Looks like he lost... I do apologize for that. Looks like that... Chicken bot ended up moving all the way forward and taking him out. So things being static on the northwest side, kind of, uh, kind of, uh, no longer anymore. Apparently, 
chicken bot has a uh, one vet, so extra hit points and extra regen on that for them. Do apologize for missing that. I like I mentioned before earlier, he was far forward and too far forward, especially you know 30 minutes almost into the game. You just gotta watch that large Ravenger group out for Maximus, which was Lucius. Looks like it's going after this uh, fire base. That'll also provide a good defensive position against that chicken that may or may not... Oh, I guess it's coming this way, so. Not a whole lot going on. Now the south is kind of now static, like the north was. And if you've made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate... This is Fat Boy in the water. Uh, I definitely appreciated all the support, likes, comments, subscriptions that everyone is uh, doing on my previous uh, videos, specifically the FAF content I have been doing. I greatly appreciate it. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please, please do so. I am trying to put out a cast pretty much every day. So if you've been enjoying this content so far, you have the joys of looking forward to more of it. We have a small group of, uh, of, uh, excuse me, of some, uh, bricks being chased by these, uh, two Galactic Colossus. Run, Forest, run! Like, that's a perfect, like, look at that, just in the background, hanging out. Yeah, that does not, that does not look fun for those guys. Like, uh, we gotta go. We got some, uh, Bad news, guys. They got some. Uh, uh, <laughs> this is not good. This is not good. You gotta keep going. Uh, they're coming. Enemy forces are coming. Uh, there we go. Sorry about that. They're gonna push in. Does Team One have an answer for this? They do have a Monkey Lord, but against two Colossus, that is not Colossi. Anyway. Uh, it's not going to go good. We have another experimental. So BRS just cranking out all of his experimentals. Well, with a mass income of 775, yeah, that easily being able to done. And that mass generation discrepancy is getting wider. Almost 700 mass discrepancy generated as well as a 250 mass total discrepancy. That's that's a paragon's worth. That's, that's a lot of mass to be down. Force out movement. We still have the firebase over here. Just kind of holding on. Not doing a whole lot. Chicken bot sitting out. Has three vet ranking, uh, repping up. Not too bad. But the main action right now is this uh, force out from team two. Taking out PD. The it uh, looks like we lost one of our uh, brick friends, so there's only there's only three left. And they're like, we gotta get back, we gotta get back. <laughs> Shields should not be up front. Just a just a tip for uh, BRS. You should put those at least around your experimentals because they just got eviscerated for pretty much nothing. They offered a small distraction, but they could have been better used to shield the hit points on these guys. And you are turning around for they're like they're launching. See again, in the other side of the of the coin, Luke. You should not just send shields up, just to send them up. Like they're not gonna. It's not gonna do a whole lot. They can't. There's no offensive capabilities, so I'm not gonna do a whole lot. Looks like the the face lasers are gonna eradicate this uh, monkey lord, and the suction cup hands are sucking up all of those bricks and loyalists. So. If Team 1 throws enough at this, they'll kill both of them, but it will be a lot of mass thrown at these Colossus to deal with it. The ASF are posturing to protect these Colossus, and as well, we have a fat boy on the west side with a bunch of Percival's in tow. So attacks on two fronts in the middle, and looks like we have some gunships down here starting to use that APM advantage against their opponents. Looks like we have some fighter bombers going after this fat boy. And it's gone! It's gone! So that distraction, I guess, from the uh, ASFs were able to take out that fat boy. Slow down that assault. We'll still keep going, but we'll definitely uh, slow it down. The chi There's two chickens now. They've multiplied. They're like rabbits. It's two of them now. Got some Percivals in tow. 
They're not focusing the chicken, which they could have, but they're gonna die and not really get a whole lot worth out of it, so sad to see. Looks like the Colossus have decided to head home. I think each of them have a rank in vet, so more hit points, more region, like I've been saying. And look at all that juicy, juicy mass over here. 10,000 mass for this uh, monkey lord. And, you know, spotting a bunch of other mass. So, I mean, not a victory for team one, not a victory for team two. It's more like they w team two walked in, killed the enemy units, and then walked out. So, all that team one loses is some mass and the time it took to build the units. We do have a Galactic Colossus for Luke, so it's good to see that uh, both teams are getting their experimentals up and running. These gunships are busy taking out the preliminary defenses of BRS in the south. We have two armies, ac two armies of units being built up, as well as a host of engineers in the back helping rep up all of those forces. We have another experimental out from Luke. It's probably another Colossus by the looks of it. It is. Just hanging out. Missiles. Launchers in the north. Going after some structures. Some uh, resourcing options as well as some sats. Sams as well. Not sats. I hear the noise. I heard it. Strategic launch detected. Out from this liberator here from bad where is that one going max reclaim maybe or build something what? looks like there's a little bit of mass done and there's another nuke so we have two nukes for team one two missile launchers is that going to land let's see do we have we do and it just finished so that is going to counter that nuke quite nicely Rascom is being built for both teams, so repping up Eco quite nicely. That disparity is starting to be a little bit smaller. The generated mass is a different story, but at least for... At least total mass is a different story, but the generated mass is starting to uh, come back together. We have another nuke, so it looks like Team 1 is coordinating the nukes. I guess they could have easily just launched both of them at the same time and see which one hit. But that is the only nuke in the clip, and the Rascoms know it. Engineers know it. BRS knows it. Uh, move your burstables. That's kind of a waste if you just leave them there. They are good units. Oh, but it did not go for that old base of Burko Insanity. It's going for T-1000's base. Is there an anti-nuke for him? There is one being built, but not so much. Boom. Big fire explosion. Team one, uh, team 1 dealt a decisive blow against their opponent to the west. Two chickens on the northwestern flank for Team 1 for Maximus. Those uh, Ravagers are going to come nice and handy. But these Percivals, they should probably spread out a little more. Those, uh, those smaller moving projectiles do an AoE damage as well as the regular guns. Let's see, can they take out the first chicken? Oh, it's trying to dodge. Oh, that one's out. Good placement of the flak in the back, taking out anything coming over for a second pass. The chicken bot is moving forward. I don't know what it's going to gain, honestly. I mean, yeah, the rest of the Percivals are going to die, but if it gets any closer to these Ravagers, that can be... And, well, speaking of which, there, there go the hit points, just shredding. Look at those hit points, just shredding. Shredding off of that experimental. Ooh. Oh, got a rank and vet, though. Back, got 7,000 hit points out of that. And it's starting to dodge the shots. Oh, but if it walks into that ion storm, oh, it's going to sit here. We have T2 artillery in, in this fire base as well. No shield. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, more Percivals. Let's see if they take out the other chicken. And are they gonna, is he going to live to fight another day? Sub 1000. He had 20 hit points. Ah, eh, oh, never mind. He dead. Oh, game paused and then unpaused. That was not me. That was the players in the game pausing it. Massive T3 land army for BRS hovering around this hillock. We'll see if they uh, do anything with that. That force that I was talking about earlier is now 
combining into one giant one for Luke, and it looks like he's going to push forward in this direction and be able to take a nice uh, beating to the enemy. All those Harbingers. Shields, good compliment. Shields helping uh, shield some of the Harbingers' other shields, so double shields, plus... You got some, you got some flak, got some T2 units, so good compliment. Got some uh, mobile, mobile missile anti-air, really good, really good complement of units. Massive uh, intel gathering plan for for Maximus, seeing what's going on down in the south. Kind of curved it a little more to the the right, but should have gone over here as well. Czar under construction for BRS in the back line as well do we have any more colossus under con yes just colossus colossus and more colossus and again with that whole like he built one stopped started building another one stopped again and just it's like it's not finished and it bugs me <laughs> it's like just focus on one thing <laughs> i know it's hard and you know subcom brain is starting to send in at 37 minutes but still where is that I, I saw the notification pop up. Where is that experimental at? It's probably another Colossus, I'm assuming, but don't know where it's at. Uh, we do have a Megalith done for bad in the mid, supporting these two Colossus. Good to see some uh, teamwork going on with that. Yeah, I still don't see that. Oh, there it is. It's just walking off. I just completely didn't even see it. Another Colossus, so that's three for the northwestern, northeastern team. They're just talking in chat. So they're telling Max to focus on crushing the, the north and then push, obviously, southward. Which he's starting to do with all these uh, Percivals. Finally, finally took out that base that sat there for, I don't know, 15 minutes. Stratwing on the way for Max as well. The ASFs are posturing to defend, make shields, and protect. Team 1000 is all by himself. We have some more Colossus in the mid. We have one, two, three, four. How many of those does he have now? He has eight. He has eight. Is that, wait, is that finished? No, okay, so those are under construction. Those don't count. So he has six. He has six completed Colossus. If he's gonna build, if he could group those together and shove them forward, he could probably take out the entire middle army for Team 1. We have Rascoms on a Continental moving to the front. Oh, we have an air air engagement for both teams. Oh, that's a bad bad set. Team one, Max was not paying attention. Oh, this is not good. They are definitely going to take out the rest of the air forces. And looks like BRS has noticed. Are these gonna drop in time? No, that's such a disaster there are six rascoms most likely destroyed for maximus that is ooh, that's gotta hurt uh, uh. ouch what oh he just noticed <laughs> he noticed like uh there's something going on in the water over there uh team two has finally noticed the uh experimental production yard that's in the water and <laughs> not on land again like i said earlier good move Harder to detect and whatnot. We have the laser under construction for Maximus. Maybe a uh, Telus knife is on the cards for him. Interesting to see if that does anything. Mass field. Yeah, let's look at the mass field here. About uh, 30,000, I'd say. Close to. That's in Maximus's territory. He can easily get that. Anyone need mass? Looks like uh, Luke has a bunch of mass he wants to give out to anybody who needs it. Czar under construction in the back line for him as well. Is that Czar finished? It has. Where is it? Over here with the Air Force. Good. Group those guys all nice and um, tight with some bombers and land units in tow. So the eastern flank for BRS is looking good. And again, that, that front line is starting to diminish. They're probably operating at about 40% of the map. So less mass available in terms of mass points. Nice little, uh, nice little formation in the middle here. Got some, uh, got some anti-air with some uh, Percivals and some shields. Nice, nice, pretty design. Large, huge flight of Corsairs in the middle with some Revenants in tow, uh, T3 Strat bombers. 
that's going to be used probably to uh, annihilate something. Maybe the comms, maybe you know, strat, uh, strategic missile defenses, just anything. They could probably just one shot anything on the on the field right now. Spy planes on the way, looking to probably find the comm or any strategic uh, emplacements they wish to take out. But the anti-air is strong, and they are not getting anywhere. That is a good tactic too. If you can prevent your enemy from knowing what you're doing for long enough, they won't be able to counter you, unless they somehow magically build the thing that counters you. Luke has another experimental constructed, probably another Galactic Colossus. Yep. So that is now what num numero uh, cuatro for him. Num number four does have that czar still. Is it being constructed? Not nah, by like a couple engineers. So that's gonna take a while. Uh, here's some Titan fire going on. Just got some uh, engineers going for some mass probably on some reclaim orders. Team two starting to re-expand into the northwest section. But it's very slow and looks like a broadsword is out to deal with that. We got a Galactic Colossus under fire from some gunships and another one moving in tow. Lots of flak. Would like to see the T3 units up front a little bit. More shields, more T3 units on the way. And T2 as well. Large air wing. Uh, ASFs probably should be called in to help with that fight at some point. All those gunships are gone. Mass. Mass. Looks like uh, BRS is talking about mass in chat. Oh, that Zar. That Zar is coming in. There's a lot of flak. And the, the, T, the land force is out from Luke's like, We gotta get out of here, boys! Oh, uh, those uh, shields are just starting to evaporate on that Zar. Look at him. And the shield's gone. Hit point damage. Ooh, this is not going to look good. He's going to pull it back. Is BRS going to pull it back? And... Nope. It's going to die. And... Should have at least angled it a little bit to crash land on the enemy forces a little bit more. But too little too late. And Galactic Colossus come in way too late. Could have had them come in with the Tsar take out more of that anti-air faster. and Maybe that Zorm maybe would have been kept online. Apparently Max is mass stalling. Is that the case? Does he just have a bunch of mass he's not spending? No, he's not mass stalling. Weird. Hmm. I don't know what that's about. Oh, it looks like we got a attempt on a snipe on something. Well, it looks like the SMD. Unfortunately, there's another one up here. So even if they take that out, it's not going to amount to a whole lot. Especially because that one is not loaded, but it is almost loaded. So if they launch a nuke now, it's going to get stopped. And right on cue. Oh, it's even even bad in chat. It's like, is that the only SMD there? Uh, well, you know, some engineers coming to assist that. And it looks like... Uh, it's it's gonna it's not gonna land unfortunately. Looks like they came after some resourcing options in the corner, but didn't really get that far. Looks like BRS has also cannibalized his uh, his allies' base and has gone after a lot of his resourcing options. Actually, I think he has all of them. Wait, so they're building mass storage. Are they gonna gift it over to him? Maybe they've been gifting it over to him. That's an interesting play. Maybe uh, Team 1000 realizes that, yeah, he only has 13 mass. Just funneling everything into one player might be the way to go. So we'll see if that strategy play pays off. Usually that pays off only when they're building something. And, uh, well, I mean, there's the answer to that. That Paragon is almost done. Ooh, that's going to be nasty. And then looks like a Salvation already prepped so engineers can come in and just, like, they're on... Um, they're on repairing order, but they've been on halted, so once that finishes, he will activate those engineers and rapidly build that salvation. Do we have anything else? Air grids coming up. SMDs on the way. Yeah, this is going to get crazy real quick. But I would recommend not standing next to that thing, because if it explodes, boy, oh boy! Shielding it up, good play. Anti-tele defense, good play. Lots of uh, T1 point defense. Shred any comm coming near. 
Yep, there it goes. Those engineers have been given the order to build, and they're going to spam up these rapid fire artillery installations, generating 3,700 mass. Yeah, that, that generated eco went way up. But it, but even with the Paragon now online, Team 1 was up almost a million mass. So it's going to be a hard fought uh, victory if it comes out for Team 2 down in the bottom. We have another nuke out from Maxi Mess Triple X. Is that SMD loaded? No, it is not. So if it's on a collision course, which it's not, it's just going back to those resourcing options again. With that Paragon, it's not going to mean a whole lot. So. Salvation is almost half done. Do we have anything in the back line? We have another Megal that done, another one under construction. That Maver is now under construction. This seems like a repeat of that one sentence game I casted a week or so ago where it was a Maver versus a Paragon. And similar situation, the Paragon finished first and the Maver finished last and it won. So are we going to have a repeat or is the Paragon going to win it out this time? By Paragon, I mean everything that the Paragon ends up building. Salvation now completed. Another Salvation under construction. Another Salvation almost done. Air Grid's coming online even further. That Mavor has completed. Let's go watch it extend its very um, uh, phallic shape towards the world. As it arcs up to fire its first volley. Got some uh, Rascoms just hanging out next to it, watching it, being like, dude, look at that thing. That thing is big. Boom. Okay, first shots are now being fired. Let's turn the camera back on. Where is its target location? It looks like it's going... I don't know where it's going. It's going for this water section? Really weird place to put it. Where is it going? Salvation Fire also traversing the map as well. Oh, it looks like it's going for... Oh, this base down here. Maybe taking out the air grid. It's probably what it's doing. Nice shot. Right between those two shields. Almost taking out both, but able to absorb that hit. Another Megalith finished up for bad. Strat Bomber's in the back line, and the Salvation's going after the Air grid in the back for Maximus, denying the enemy the ability to produce more ASFs. Good plan. Because even if you win, the, uh, if you lose an air fight, and the enemy depletes out their uh, ASFs, it won't matter because they won't be able to produce anymore. So. Galactic Colossus moving in the north, as well as five, count that, one, two, three, four, five Colossus moving in the south. Paragons, Mavors, Galactic Colossus. T3 land spam, just anything and everything being thrown out by these players. We have another Salvation online. That second one finished. Looks like that third one got destroyed, but another one's being replaced. Uh, looks like another one under construction. Well, let's check out what's going on with, uh, I mean, they got this T3 land spam with a bunch of T1 point defense and another line of T1 point defense. Another nuke out for Team 1. Looks like it's going for the enemy forces out from BRS and that looks like it's gonna land against all of those Percivals but we gotta check out what's going down over here. Man, a lot going down. A lot going down all at once. Look at this. This game popping off. Let's, uh, let's go big screen just for a second so that way we can see that nuke land and then we'll focus back onto this um, army down here in the south. Oh, look at that. Perfectly placed nuke. Anticipated uh, most of the units coming out and there they go. Oh, look at all these. Look at all these Galactic Colossus sucking up each other's units. Look at that. That's just one going down. You have so many more in the in the back coming back to support their brothers. Five beams on one Galactic Colossus. That is not going to go well for them, honestly. Look at that. That's just... How many does it take to take them out? What's good is they're focusing on one at a time, denying one at a time less uh, damage taken at a time means that you can easily uh, thwart off any attack pretty much taken out the first one and then more come to supply we have two more in the back over here in a pincer maneuver and we also see some megaliths in the corner sorry like the icons in the way 
uh, coming in, so we got double pincer maneuver pretty much. Let's turn the um, little icons back on. This one's almost been destroyed. Oh, look, we've lost the first Colossus. Still focusing fire onto one. So far, they have taken out one, two, three, four, five, and they've taken out one. So that's five for one, about to be six for one. Gets a ranking vet for that. We got some Harbingers coming up. Those uh, Megaliths are starting to make their move. We got, oh no, what is this? We have a T3 strategic bomber rush in the south. Are they going for any of the Salvations or that Paragon? The comm is over here. Do they know about the comm? Let's see. It looks like, yes, they do. Impacting the shield. Those shields are not going to last that long. Both shields are down. Boom. Area of effect on those bombs. Oh, almost down. 3,000 hit points. Do they turn back around? They do. More bombers in tow, and that comm is DED. One more bomb. Boom. ASF's come in too late to save the comm of BRS. Salvations focusing fire onto the base of Luke. All of these RAS comms are going to go up in smoke, and they chain react, and they're all dead. Except for a couple. That's a huge break. It is now a 3v1. It is T1 versus the world. We still have that Maver online in the north with a bunch of shields going down. I don't know why they didn't prioritize that Maver because that's the only artillery that can hit them back. They do have one, two, another one under construction. That Maver, oh, takes out one of the rapid fire artillery stations, the Salvations. I feel like that's... Oh, that was close! That was close. That Maver shot almost destroyed that Paragon. Dude, I hate to tell you, doesn't matter how many upgrades you have on that comm. If that goes off, you're dead. You better move. Okay, now... Are they starting to position? No. I mean, they, these artillery structures are very good at taking out shields, so I don't know why they didn't focus on uh, that Maver up there into the north. Maybe just didn't notice. T3, land spam, counter attack going down in the top midsection. We have all of these Galactic Colossus and Megaliths going down in the north, in the southeast section, as well as these bouncers taking on all the air. We have another nuke out on the way from Maximus, maybe targeting the Paragon. Shield is down. We have a tiny bit of shield covering it, but shields are down. A good tactic, which they probably have been doing, is ordering these engineers to a assist the shields, it'll rep up the shield faster. So essentially one shield could stave off almost an infinite number of attacks. Almost. Oh, it looks like a Maver shot landed! And the comm of Team 1000 has been defeated. And that is it, folks. All of the ACUs on Team 2 have been destroyed, which means Team 1 pulls out the victory. I'd like to thank you all for watching. I wish you all a happy weekend if it's the weekend if you're watching it if not happy day to you all like subscribe comment down below and i will see you all in the next one